Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete and this is tips number 748 which is part 4 of a 4 part series on building this drawbar for the hardened lathe. Now in the last part I made the hand wheel, drilled it, bored it and all of that and in this video I'm going to fasten that onto the tube, cut the tube off the length, talk about the bearings and then make the spanner wrench and basically conclude this chapter. Be sure and go back and watch the other three parts if you have not already done so. Let me know if you like this type of video. Put that down in the comments. So let's get started and I believe I'll start by making the spanner wrench. You know Ted did something interesting when he made these patterns and that is that, as you know, all patterns have pattern draft. You can readily see it there. So I therefore thought, well, I'm going to have to machine this to get rid of that draft so that this fully contacts the wheel. But then he emailed me and he said, well, I took care of that already. So in fact, he made the pattern flat on that side so there is no draft. And I didn't realize that. I'm so glad that he did that. So all I got to do is knock a few little bits of the flashing off there and it's just going to fit up real nicely to this. I never would have thought that the pattern would have withdrawn so easily because I didn't even realize he had done that because the pattern came right out of the sand. This is the way I'm going to lay out the hole so that it's at the correct angle on the spanner with a drill bit into the wheel and then I'm just marking it as such. Okay, the hole is drilled and I made a short peg out of cold roll steel and I will retain it with the ever-present Loctite and it'll look something like that and it fits nicely. I think you know that every drawbar needs a thrust bearing right in there and here it is shown in the Sheldon book. It's number two and I do remember those uh, from the high school that the kids would uh, drop them and they go rolling across the floor but uh, it's about a $35 item out of uh, McMaster car but notice here that this is a small South Bend drawbar from a 9 inch lathe and this is the bearing and it sure makes tightening it easier and easier to get it tight. And here's the larger South Bend drawbar also with a thrust bearing right there. So what am I going to do you ask? Well I've got a whole tin can of bearings of all kinds and I thought well before I order that $35 bearing plus $15 shipping I think I'll look through my bearings and I had a baggie with nothing but thrust bearings but what is the chances of finding one with a 1 and 3 8 oh, oh let's see uh, no ID ID and uh, by the way if you buy one from McMaster car this is probably the kind you're going to get it includes a washer and a keeper or whatever the part name is I'm not so sure but I was shocked absolutely shocked to find that in this group of junk I had a thrust bearing I believe it's probably used but it looks very good and I had the two washers a little bit different than what you see there but quite serviceable for what I'm going to do okay this is the headstock of the hardened lathe and notice that the 1 and 3 8 drawbar is a little sloppy in there 
whereas it is not sloppy in uh, the closing lathe, and I'm not so sure about the south bend lathe, but I have to take that into consideration. So what I've done off camera is two things. First of all, I did make up this bushing here, or shim, whatever you want to call it, and this could conceivably lock tight it in there, because otherwise it's going to fall out but and can be a nuisance. So I'm not sure I'm going to use that, although it took me an hour to make. But I made another bushing here, notice also a set screw in there, that will fit over the drawbar. So it will go on like that, but it has a little bit of a, oh I don't even know what to call that, so that it will fit right there and center the tubing in the headstock. So I'm going to pre-assemble it now with one washer, one thrust bearing, another washer, and finally this part. And now install it into the machine like that. But again, it's way too long, and I have to saw it off right there. But I need to determine the exact length that I need, so I'm going to screw a collet into the thread, and then I will know where I need to cut it off. Well, I got the camera set up. Note that I very carefully planned it such that when I swing the guard past, or close the guard, I should say, there's just a little bit of space in there. I'm glad I pre-planned that. Yeah, right. Okay, there's the mark. I will cut it off, off of camera. Okay, I've got it set up here. Still a little bit protruding. I may trim it off. I'm too tentative sometimes instead of just doing it. I've got this snugged up. No Loctite yet. But there is absolutely no spindle lock on this machine, never was. So what I'm using here to, to lock the spindle while I tighten the hand wheel is this type of face spanner. I had considered drilling a hole in here for a regular spanner wrench, such as this. But this is just as hard as a rock. I also had considered using this as a spanner wrench here. I do have a half inch collet with half inch stock tightened up just to check my measurement or length of the drawbar. So now what I'm going to do is take the drawbar out and lock tight the hand wheel in place and then let it set overnight. So I'll see you on the morrow. It's the next day and the drawbar is finally finished except for trimming the very end which I will do now and I did use Loctite Green to hold the wheel onto the tube. So let's step over and face this off. Well, it's all done. Let's put it to the acid test. Cut to length, and I'll be holding a piece of half inch stock in a half inch collet. So, into the end of the tail stock spindle it goes, like that, and the collet. Half inch stock. Now what I decided to do, because of the lack of a spindle lock here, is I'm going to use the, the homemade spanner and then I will hold this, well you can't see it from here, but this other ratcheting mechanism that is left from the old device and just tighten one against the other. I think that is a lot more convenient than using 
the face spanner. I don't have to raise the belt guard or fiddle around with that. So let's go over to the other end. I need to repaint this lathe. That green color is absolutely hideous. But here we go. There's half inch stock chucked up in the collet. Runs true and smooth. No wobble. And ready to use with any 5C collet. I'm not going to take a cut here. It would serve no purpose. But I just wanted to point out to you that this is the original drawbar that came with this little speed lathe. This picture was taken from eBay and it is listed at $450. To me it's only good for production but very quick to open and close but hard to change collets and get the exact adjustment and tension that you want on your work. Well that concludes this four part video series shot over about a 10 day period. Be sure and watch all four parts where I showed how to make the tube, the internal thread. I showed the pattern that Ted made for me and then how the casting was made and finally the assembly and proof test of the whole device here in this little speed lathe. Hope you enjoyed the video series. If you did, let me know if you want more of this type or if you do not like this type of thing at all so I can change my direction here on YouTube. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.